Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. As a creative, branding is really important. And the great thing about Squarespace is that you can easily customize your website's theme to fit your aesthetic from the colors, layout, font, and even importing your own logo slash headers. I also really like being able to showcase all the different types of content that I have to offer all in one place, which is much more streamlined and looks very professional. So if you're interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hello friends, in today's video, I'll be working on a gouache painting on some really beautiful handmade paper that I bought from Dodgy Paper. I actually bought these quite a number of months ago and I'm only now finally getting the chance to try it out. As always, I'll have all of the art supplies I use in the video in the description. Also, I'm happy to say that this piece that I did for this video is also going to be the limited edition postcard for the month of May over on my Patreon page. So check that out if you're interested in owning a postcard of the artwork that I made. I actually really love how the painting turned out on this handmade paper and I'm really looking forward to trying out more experiments on the other sheets that I bought here. They're just so beautiful and really adds an interesting dynamic to the painting without having to really paint in your own background. So look forward to more paintings on this paper in the future. So for those of you who are newer to my channel, every so often I like to share some real-time footage of me working on a painting while doing a question and answer voiceover. I saved a few questions that I had left over from the previous Q&A video that I didn't get around to, and I asked for some new questions over on my Instagram page earlier this week. First, I like to answer questions related to art and career, and then in the second half, I'll answer questions about me and chat all sorts of pop culture and fandom related things. If I didn't answer your question, there's a chance I probably already covered this topic in a previous video and I'll have a link to a playlist and other videos in the pinned comment for your viewing pleasure. Now with that out of the way, let's get to the questions. How much practice do you think is needed to reach a quality level of art skill? This is probably an impossible question to answer. First, Art is subjective ultimately, so quality level of art would mean something different to everyone. But on top of that, every artist learns and develops their skills at different paces. If you were to compare two different artists who spent the same number of years and hours working on their craft, more than likely you're going to see that there's going to be two totally different results from each artist. So I think that you just have to focus on your own journey and just trust that if you put in the work and the time, you will just begin to develop your own skills and improve at your own pace. Do you tend to work on multiple pieces at once or just one at a time? I usually work on one at a time. I think that it's a way of forcing me to finish pieces because that way I feel like if I finish the piece, then I can move on to the next one. I feel like if I were to work on multiples, I would have more unfinished pieces, I think. What do you do when a mistake happens with your art piece? Normally, I try my best to problem solve my way through it to try and fix it if I can. I did a video sometime last year where I was working on what was intended to be a watercolor piece, but it just wasn't turning out the way that I had wanted. And then eventually I ended up using color pencil and gouache to move it along. And in the end, I was fairly satisfied with the result but each piece is going to pose different challenges and there will be times that it might not be salvageable and that's okay. That's just the nature of creating. Sometimes it just doesn't work out, but I do think that it's good to try and finish or see to the end on as many pieces as you can because there's been 
so many times when halfway through a process, I think to myself, this is hideous. This is going to be awful. I don't know where this is going. But in the end, after a while, I, I end up liking the results. So you just have to play it by ear, I guess. Do you have any books that you use for reference that you could recommend? I have a few different art books that I use for inspiration more than reference. Uh, my favorites are the art books from a few different Miyazaki films, and I also have a pinup art book as well. I would suggest picking up a couple art books from things that you personally find inspiring, whether it be animated films, TV shows, fashion, di fashion designers, etc. I've been debating on picking up the Art of Avatar The Last Airbender book recently. I just love looking at concept sketches and artwork and that is a series that I love dearly. So that's kind of the next one on my list. You seem to be great at so many art mediums. So is there one you can never get the hang of? Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, so two things. In high school, I had my first and only experience with oil paints, which I did not enjoy. I'm definitely too impatient with the drying time. Secondly, sculpture or anything in the 3D realm, I have a really difficult time with as well. I remember in one art class where we had to sculpt a portrait of a live model and I found that to be really, really challenging. But to be fair, both oil paint and sculpture are both things that I have very little experience with. So it's not really quite right to say I never got the hang of them if I only tried them a handful of times or with oil paint just once. So those are just mediums that I found really challenging, but it's pretty likely that if I were to really put in the time and effort, I could eventually figure it out. Do watercolor paintings fade away with time? What to do to prevent them fading? So when purchasing your art materials, you're going to want to get high quality supplies if you're looking to sell them or have them last a long time. One of the th key things to look at is the light fastness rating. This rating determines how resistant the paints are to fading over time. But overall, you're going to want to keep the artwork away from direct sunlight. And it's also good to use museum glass when framing artwork that's on paper, which helps add an, ac an extra layer of protection. Favorite body part or feature to draw in portraits? It would probably come as no surprise that eyes on portrait are definitely my favorite to draw, but Funny enough, other than the face, my second favorite part to draw is boobs, <laughs> which is why I like drawing women and oftentimes I really enjoy drawing pinup illustrations. How do you simplify characters for your marker illustrations? There is no right or wrong way to approach this and it is kind of hard to explain, but for me, I try to focus on the features that make the character unique and recognizable, whether it be their color palette, the shape of certain features, or an expression that they normally have. Basically, you just have to ask yourself, what's the first thing you notice about this character when you look at them? You know, what makes them unique? And when you kind of determine those kinds of things, then you can make sure to emphasize that when you interpret them in your own illustration. What are two colors you really like using in your art? I think the most commonly combo that I use is dark blue with a baby pink. It's just such a satisfying color palette for me. And you probably will notice that I do it pretty often. Least favorite colors as a pair? Probably green and purple, like the Hulk which is funny because I actually used that color combo in a digital portrait video I did a couple months ago. And while it was certainly an interesting challenge, it also made me realize I never wanted to work in that color palette ever again. Have you ever worked on a mural? The closest I've gotten was in high school, the art classes got the chance to paint the classroom doors and my group and I got to paint the cosmetology door and I sketched it out to sort of look like a magazine cover. 
I remember it was two portraits and there was like makeup and hair products around them. We used a projector to transfer my sketch onto the door and then we used probably acrylic paint to color it in. I wonder if it's still there or if it got painted over. Probably got painted over. It's been a very long time since I was in high school. <laughs> Do you prefer drawing men or women? I mean, it's probably not surprising. I do generally gravitate towards drawing women or femme people and portraits, mostly because I that's just the nature of my work. It's very feminine. But I will say lately I have been having a lot of fun drawing fan art of male characters and I don't know exactly why. I mean, it's something that I definitely did a lot of in high school. And I think that in this pandemic, I have sort of been reverting back to a lot of my high school habits and interests. So that might be part of it. But anyway, more male fan art to come, I'm sure. Do you have any advice for young artists? My main piece of advice would be to be patient. I think that young people and new artists are in such a rush to be amazing right away. Trust me, I totally understand that it can be frustrating when your taste and skills don't match up, but like any skill, it takes time to improve. All of the artists that you admire, they did not just like pop out of the womb being able to create the work that they do. It takes years and years of practice and discipline to achieve what they achieve. And for me, as someone who has been making art for a very long time, I don't think I will ever reach a point where I feel like this is it. I've made it. I'm 100% happy with all the work that I make. I think that it's just, it's an ongoing journey and it's never going to end. And that's kind of the beauty and exciting part of being a creative is that your work is always going to change and always going to grow and develop. And that's part of the process of, of being an artist. Should I post art I'm not necessarily proud of if I'm trying to build an online presence? I think it depends on how you really feel about the piece. If you really dislike it or see zero merit in the artwork that you've made, then it might not make sense to post it. But there's definitely been tons of times when I've finished something and while it may not have necessarily been my favorite, there may have been a couple of elements of it that I enjoyed and so I'll post, I'll post it anyways. And sometimes I'll be surprised at how positive the response is on something that I, you know, wasn't 100% on. Of course, you know, artists, I think we are all always going to be our own worst critic and it's pretty rare for me to ever be 100% proud of anything that I make. So you just kind of have to trust your gut on it. If you know you look at the piece and it makes you cringe or recoil, then yeah, don't post it. <laughs> but if you think that, yeah, maybe this isn't my best work, but I think that there's still something about it that I enjoy, then that might be a good reason to post it. What do you think you should do if you feel like creating, but don't feel like posting it? You absolutely should not let anything stop you from creating. I know that social media really makes us think that we have to share and monetize every little thing that we do, but if you don't want to share it, you shouldn't have to. If you really wanted to, you could even have like a separate sketchbook that's just for you so that you always have a safe space where you can freely, freely create. I think that it's really unfortunate that we have kind of come into this cycle of creating for social media as opposed to creating for ourselves. And so, yeah, don't feel obligated to post if you don't want to. Would you consider getting a team later in the future to help with brand deals, legalities, and overall channel growth? This is something that 
a friend has mentioned to me a couple of times when I'm ranting to them about my stress levels and being overwhelmed about all the different things that I need to take care of. But I really have a hard time coming to terms with the concept of hiring somebody, especially since I've technically only been doing this full time for less than a year. But it is possible that one day I may need help with certain things here and there, like packing shop orders or dealing with emails, you know, the, the types of like admin type things that doesn't necessarily need me to do. But I definitely am a bit of a control freak when it comes to that. And so I have a hard time like relinquishing those types of any really like any tasks that related to my 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 uh, art practice to somebody else. So we shall see. We'll sh we shall see. <laughs> I want to start sell I want to start selling my drawings. I'm thinking of selling some of my work to family members slash friends just to start out. When did you start to sell your work and do you have any tips? I definitely think that's a great way to start. I think that, yeah, starting out small is definitely the way to go in the beginning. I started selling my work soon after I graduated college at local art markets and anime slash comic conventions. I just got really small runs of prints and stickers done at local print shops. And then slowly over time, when my social media presence began to grow, that's when I decided to make an online shop so that I could cater to a wider audience. Of course, getting products and merchandise produced can be a large upfront cost, especially if you don't know how much you're going to sell. So for those of you who don't have any experience with selling your work yet, I would say it might be worth checking out platforms like Society6 or Inprint first because they essentially handle all of the producing, order fulfillment, etc. And that way you can gauge your audience's interest in your work before sinking all your money into items that might not sell. What are five things you wish you had known before making content creation your career? I'm usually really bad at lists, but I will try my best. So first, you are not obligated to say yes to every single opportunity that comes your way. Sometimes certain things are just not the right fit for you and that is okay. Number two, similarly, it is not possible to please everyone and you should not feel guilty or selfish for choosing to do what fulfills you as an artist over what someone else is requesting of you. Number three, you need to set boundaries because if you overwork yourself and burn out, this career is not going to be sustainable. Number four, get an accountant. And number five, remember to just be kind to yourself. If you don't meet every goal you set out in a certain time frame, try not to beat yourself up over it. It's going to be fine. How much money did you have to save before you made art your career? I don't remember exactly how much money I saved, but you definitely want to make sure you can cover your living expenses for several months. The major determining factor for me when I finally made the decision to go full time was I looked at the average amount of income I was making per month. And when I saw that it covered my monthly living expenses, that's when I felt fairly comfortable to make that jump. But, you know, being in this field, the income will fluctuate. So, yes, it is definitely crucial to have savings. Will you participate in any art challenges slash art prompts this year? I wanted to do more mermaid illustrations this month, but unfortunately I don't think that's going to happen. And then for the past few years, I have been creating a themed prompt challenge for myself every October. So I hope to do that again this year. I'm thinking this time around, I want to draw witches again, but each with a different familiar companion. I love drawing witches and I've been wanting to draw more animals, so I think it's the perfect combo. Would you ever create an art book one day or this year? I want to create an art book one day, but it definitely would not happen this year. I do have zines, which are smaller self-published magazines that contain collections of my work. But as for like a proper formal art book, that will be something that comes like way down the line. 
I'm just not really satisfied with my current body of work at the moment. What is your favorite part about being an artist on social media? The not so personal answer is that as an extension of being on social media, I am able to be an artist full time. However, the real answer is that I genuinely love being able to connect with other people about common interests. And I think that especially during this pandemic and now having, you know, living alone for the past few months, I think that it is nice to feel like you have company, even if you don't physically. Does that make sense? <laughs> I think that's why I've been doing a lot of fan art or doing a lot of these kind of longer chatty videos because I just really enjoy connecting with all of you on various topics. Funniest art challenge that you participated in? I don't know if this is necessarily funny to everyone, but my friend Elise and I have done this draw from memory challenge a couple of times on my channel. The first time we drew Disney characters from memory and then the second time we drew Ghibli characters from memory and we had so much fun making those and I really hope that we can finally get around to doing a third round because I we both really love doing them even though they're not necessarily that popular on my channel. Have you lived up to your younger self's dreams and goals? I mean, when I was younger, I had no concrete idea of what I wanted to do with my life. And on top of that, what I do right now as a career was like not really even heard of at the time. So how would I ever possibly known? But yeah, even when I finished college, I wasn't really sure. It took me a really long time to arrive where I am now. But ultimately, if younger me knew that I would be a full-time artist right now, I think she would have been shook. <laughs> so in a way, I definitely do feel like I did achieve some of the dream or most of the dream. Are you going to do more vlogs? Yes. I have been filming here and there for the past couple of months, but not very consistently because I have been on quite the emotional roller coaster and motivation for participation in life has been low, but I will likely have a new one next month, I think. Do you have TikTok? No. Keeping up with my current social media platforms and content creation is hard enough. I really don't think I could handle another one. Which fashion designers have been inspiring you lately? The first one that comes to mind is Richard Quinn. I recently came across some runways that he did that have this really fun juxtaposition of these really dramatic shapes with bold floral prints paired with like a latex or vinyl. I think it's just such a dynamic combination of feminine and bad bitch energy. <laughs> and I think that's more or less what I want to aspire to be in my life. What is your favorite fashion trend? Definitely high-waisted pants, skirts, and shorts. It's something that I think is essentially flattering on any body type. And personally, for someone who has does not have a small waist or a flat stomach, high-waisted bottoms just opened up so many more fashion options for me. Also, I'm still very much loving all of the 90s trends that have come back around like chokers and excessive hair clips. Top three countries you want to visit. Japan is definitely number one. Second, maybe Singapore. I've heard really good things about it. And then third, somewhere in Europe because I've never been before. Ideal place to go on vacation. I have not done like a ton of traveling in my life. So my answer is definitely based on a very limited amount of experience. But I have to say one of my favorite trips was going to Disney World with my best friend a couple of years ago. It was we had the best time. Obviously, Disney World is not going to be for everyone, but for the two of us who grew up with it and have a strong nostalgic attachment to it, and we're really kids at heart, it was amazing. Plus, when you do the whole package deal, it is very, very easy. Your transportation, stay, food, everything is taken care of, so you never have to stress out about those types of things. And in general, I prefer my travel trips to be more active in the sense of doing things like lounging around on a resort next to a pool or a beach is 
nice for maybe a day or two, but then I think I would get bored. Hence, something like Disney World, there's just endless amounts of things to do. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Definitely to teleport. I like traveling, but having to do the commute on planes and trains, all that, it's such a pain in the butt. If you only had 10 minutes to prepare for a TED Talk, what would your topic be? Honestly, probably about how animated storytelling is just as valid and compelling as something live action and that just because it's animated does not necessarily mean it's exclusive for children. Furthermore, sometimes certain stories can be more effective when told in an illustrative way. I feel very strongly about this and it's probably why I'm so exhausted by all of the live action remakes of animated series. Top five favorite dishes for dinner. Hmm. This is a hard one and I think it, my answers would probably be different tomorrow, but I'm just gonna list off the five things that first come to mind that I'm craving right now. So number one, dim sum. Number two, a poke bowl or sushi. I feel like they hit the same craving. Number three, pad thai. Number four, bun mi. And number five, shepherd's pie. How are you? I'm okay. I've been better and I think I've been worse. So, you know, the show must go on, so they say. What is your favorite self-care activity? Watching TV shows and or reading manga slash webcomics, basically anything that distracts me from my real life. What is one thing you would say to your younger self and another thing you would like to say to your future self? To my younger self, I would say, don't be ashamed or feel guilty about the things that you enjoy. Embrace the fact that you like anime and making art because one day, believe it or not, that, that is going to be what brings you success. And to my future self, I would say, I hope you've figured out your finances and your legal stuff because being an independent artist is stressful in that sense. <laughs> How did you convince your mom to let you pursue graphic design? So for some context, I went to college for graphic design, even though my mom was very wary of me pursuing a creative career. Thankfully, my mom did not while she did not always agree with some of my choices, she never forced me to do or not to do anything, which I'm really grateful for. So I chose graphic design over illustration because it felt like the more quote unquote practical creative field. So that's what helped me reassure her a little bit and also what helped inform my decision at the time. If you could be any creature slash mythical being, what would you be? Ooh, I think I gotta go with a sphinx. A human head for intelligence and speech, body of a lion for strength and prowess, and wings so I can fly. That'd be sick, I'd have it all. <laughs> What's a movie you you've only seen once but has still stuck with you? The first one that comes to mind is Lion, starring Dev Patel. It's based on a true story about this man, Saru, who got separated from his family when he was five and then is adopted by an Australian couple. But then decades later, as an adult, he uses Google Maps to trace his way back to his family in India. It's seriously so heartbreaking and it's such an incredible story. I definitely recommend you check it out. What's a song you listen to in middle school and still love? Don't worry, we won't judge. I technically didn't have middle school, but in terms of the music I listened to as a preteen, something that I occasionally go back to for shits and giggles is original Disney movie soundtracks like High School Musical, Camp Rock, Hannah Montana. And somehow I still remember most, if not all the words. <laughs> what songs do you have on repeat right now? I'm not even joking. I've mostly been listening to anime openings and endings. I even made myself a playlist of all of my favorites. It's, I don't know. I've just really been enjoying it. <laughs> what were your top three songs on your Spotify wrapped? Ooh, this is fun. So for 2020, my top songs were Comme des Garçons by Rina Sawayama, Adore You by Harry Styles, and People, I've Been Sad by Christine and the Queens. 
which pretty much does sum up most of what I listened to in 2020. What is your favorite Disney movie? This is a really hard one because I'm very indecisive and pretty much, you know, the majority of the animated ones from the 90s are very near and dear to me. But honestly, I think right now I got to go with Hercules. The music and the humor gets me every time. Plus, whoever decided that a group of muses would narrate the story in song was a genius. Who is your favorite Disney princess sidekick character? Probably Mushu from Mulan. He is hysterical and I quote him far too often. Have you watched Shadow and Bone? Yes, I am seriously obsessed with it. I binged it in two days. I actually made a story while I was watching it of the actor who plays the character David. He is also the actor who plays Freddy in skins the tv show and my my millennial brain just immediately was like oh my god it's freddy <laughs> but anyways uh back to shadow and bone i've never read the books but now i really want to read the six of crows duology because let's face it in my opinion kaz inej and jesper stole the show they were by far my favorite part of the series and i just loved their whole dynamic and all the heists so i want to know more do you like DC superheroes? If yes, which one is your favorite? I do, yes. Um, I don't think I could pick a favorite specifically out of the characters, but I would say that like the Batman universe is my favorite. I grew up watching the animated Batman TV show. I watched Batman Beyond, and I loved those 80s and 90s live action Batman movies. So it's, it's really hard for me to not pick those as my favorite. What would be your magical girl weapon? I would definitely want the cloud cards from Cardcaptor Sakura. The options are limitless and so versatile. Like she can use all the elements, she can fly, she could jump, create illusions, you name it. It's pretty amazing. She's got it all. If there's one fictional character you'd marry, be married to for the rest of your life, who would it be and why? Oh my gosh. If y'all know me, I have a thousand and one fictional crushes. So I gave this a lot of thought, but if I'm being kind of practical here, I might have to go with Seth Cohen from The O.C. I will admit it's been a very long time since I've seen the show and I never actually watched the final season, but Seth is a total nerd and enjoys illustrating. So we are already got so much in common and I think we would get along. Plus, he could teach me how to skateboard, and that'd be pretty awesome. Top five drag queens. Oh my gosh, it is so hard to narrow these answers down. But I would say the first ones that come to mind is Jujube, Manila Luzon, Naomi Smalls, Shea Coulee, and Adore Delano. Favorite RuPaul's Drag Race runway. There have been so many incredible runways on Drag Race. Why must you make me choose? Okay, but honestly, the first one that comes to mind is Violet Tchotchke's season eight finale look. It was and still is jaw dropping. Also bonus mention to Violet's fall fashion week moment when she revealed into the red plaid. So seamless, so good. Favorite Drag Race lip sync or favorite finale group performance? I mean, it's impossible not to mention Shea Coulee versus Sasha Velour in the finale of season nine doing Whitney Houston's emotional. Truly iconic and I don't think there will ever be a reveal that good. Another favorite is Alyssa Edwards versus Tatiana's Shut Up and Drive by Rihanna in All Stars 2. They had matching outfits. They danced in sync. It was oh, so good. And then honorable mention, Denali Fox versus Kamora Hall to 100% Pure Love by Crystal Waters. Denali absolutely killed it and just is so fun to watch. And then for finale group performance, it absolutely has to be Reggie Rochu in All Stars 2. Just legendary. Have you watched Castlevania or Voltron? Yes. I watched Voltron, the, ne the Netflix one, not the 80s one, uh, when it was initially coming out and I loved it. 
But then season eight happened and I dropped it. And I have not seen past, I think, episode one or two on season eight. Sorry, not sorry. Castlevania, I literally started watching this week. I'm on season two and I'm really enjoying it. I never played the games, but I do love me some vampires and fantasy genre stuff. Plus, the characters are all so beautiful. My goodness, I can't stop staring at them. It's mesmerizing. I will warn you though, it's definitely got a lot of gore. So mind the rating for all you younglings or for those of you who don't handle gore very well. I personally don't prefer gore, but the level of gore in Castlevania I can handle, but much more than that would be maybe a bit much. What's your favorite webtoon or manhwa at the moment? Oh, definitely The Remarried Empress. I really love the format of revealing a major plot point right out the gate. And it's not a spoiler since it happens in the first chapter. So she accepts the proposed divorce to the emperor and immediately declares she's remarrying the ruler of a neighboring kingdom. And then we flash back to see how it all unfolds to reach that pivotal moment. And it is so satisfying, just like knowing how it's going to turn out. I also love that she seemingly has like this cold, reserved exterior, but is actually quite, you know, warm and soft deep down. I feel like that type of character, you know, cold on the outside, soft on the inside is typically reserved for male characters. So it's really refreshing to see that for a female lead. Also, I appreciate that she is super badass, but not in like the stereotypical way with like, you know, fighting skills. I She's like a badass with her intellect and wit and calculative nature. Oh, it's so satisfying. I freaking love it. Plus Heinri, which is her, you know, love interest or, you know, counterpart is a sweet puppy dog. And I just think that's such a fun dynamic. If you were to be a villain, which anime would you want to be in? Honestly, it's got to be Sailor Moon because they have some of the most fun and stylish villain character designs. I only could dream of being that fabulous. Listen, Todoroki or Zuko. This is hilarious to me because... I'm sure like many of you, yeah, when I first started watching My Hero Academia, my brain immediately thought of Zuko when I saw Todoroki. I was just like, the creator of this series has definitely seen Avatar, right? <laughs> I love both characters, but I gotta go with Zuko. He has the most incredible character arc from, you know, starting out as this angry, misguided antagonist to a hardworking, empathetic character who wants to be good and do better. And I just oh, love it. Staying on the topic of Avatar, are you a Zutara shipper or Katang? So in case y'all need context, these are the pairing names for the characters in Avatar The Last Airbender, Zuko and Katara or Aang and Katara. I am 100% on board with Zutara. When I first watched the series, I was really hoping it was going to go that way. Like I mentioned earlier, Zuko has such an amazing character arc in the series. And I think one of the contributing elements to this is his dynamic with Katara. I think that it would have been really amazing, like full circle moment for, for her to, you know, coming to terms with how she felt about the Fire Nation if she ended up getting with Zuko. Don't get me wrong. I love Mei and I love Aang as characters, but I think with Zuko and Mei, the beach episode is a good example of why their dynamic didn't really work. And then with Aang and Katara, it always felt really maternal to me. Like she always felt like his not mother maybe, but you know, caretaker or like older sister. That's just like the, the relationship that I vibed from them. Whereas I feel like with Zuko and Katara, they are, it's just 
feistier and I think that he brings out a different side to her which I think is just ultimately more interesting and compelling to me and you know the fire and the water the opposites attract that whole thing but in any case ultimately you know I respect everyone's preferences this is just my own thing and I will say the voice actor of Zuko also shipped them together and was convinced that they were going to end up together initially too. So I think that's a fun little side note. Favorite character design? Probably Utena from the anime Revolutionary Girl Utena. She is the perfect blend of feminine and bad bitch energy. She's got, you know, the long pink hair and then the knight-esque costume. She wields a sword and is got, she's got my favorite color combo of the light pink, navy blue, and the red. Oh, so good. Favorite female lead in an anime slash manga. This might be cliche, but I gotta go with Usagi slash Sailor Moon. I think she will just always have a very special place in my heart, especially the 90s anime. There's just something so hilarious and relatable about how she's this huge crybaby and she's kind of lazy. She doesn't excel in school and she really would just rather spend all of her time playing video games and fantasizing about boys. She's essentially like the farthest thing from what you would expect of the savior of the universe, but yet here she is, you know, fighting evil by moonlight and winning love by daylight. <laughs> if you could remake, rewrite, etc., one piece of media, what would you do? If I had the option, I would want to slightly change the ending of Samurai Champloo. Mild spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but our three main protagonists go their separate ways at the end, and that just made me so upset. They go on this incredible journey together, and they declare how they've never had this type of friendship with anyone else, and it's like a special bond, and then they just all leave in different directions. So... If I had it my way, I would have loved if they had continued to stay together, obviously. And also, I was high key hoping that Fu was going to end up with one of the guys. I would have been perfectly fine if she ended up with Mugen or Jean, but the yeah, the romance, the romantic in me really wanted it to happen either way. With either guy, I would have been perfectly good with either one. But alas. We just have to wonder and agonize for the rest of time. What is your favorite anime currently? Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm so into it. I'm re-watching it for the second time. Who's your favorite Haikyuu team and character? I really love the Nakoma team. I really like that they operate as like a whole unit. And Kuro is my favorite character, but Nishinoya and Suki are a close second and third. Thoughts on Skate the Infinity? Y'all know me so well. <laughs> I have truly fallen down the Skate the Infinity rabbit hole and cannot get out. I was seeing a lot of fan art of it going around and then very randomly the YouTube algorithm decided to show me a video clip where someone had recreated the first scene in the skate opening with Jujutsu Kaisen characters instead. So I watched it, thought it was adorable, and then watched the actual skate opening and then decided, all right, I'm, I'm going to watch the show. And yeah, it is seriously so outrageous. I love it. I watched it and subbed first and then kept seeing all these like dubbed compilation videos. And then I was like, how did they manage to make this even gayer? I love it. <laughs> so now I'm like, well, I got to watch the dub. Also, hashtag Matcha Blossom forever. I've just got to know, are you a Yaoi fan? Well, funny you should ask. Skate the Infinity is technically in the shonen genre, I believe, but it is hella gay and I loved every minute of it. Also, my art mutual, Enerjax, was convincing me to watch Yuri on Ice, so I have added that to my watch list. If you could be in any shonen battle anime, which would you be in, and what would your character ability be? Oh, hands down, Bleach. 
I know a lot of people criticize Bleach for its lackluster plot towards the end of the series, but you have to admit that it definitely has some of the coolest character designs and all the different swords and powers are just so badass. Overall, the series is just really, really stylish and which is why I still love it to this day. So I would definitely want to be a Soul Reaper. I don't know exactly what I would want my sword's abilities to be or what like my Bankai would look like, but a favorite of mine was always Hitsugaya's Dragon Ice Sword. Super, super cool. Have you watched the Demon Slayer movie? If so, what are your thoughts? Ah, I have not gotten the chance to see it yet. I'm so jealous of everyone who got to see it in theaters. I'm sure it was an incredible experience. Ontario is still really struggling to deal with the pandemic, so I definitely will not be go going to a movie theater anytime soon. I have been hearing, though, that the movie is coming to Crunchyroll soon, so maybe I'll be able to watch it there. I do know of, I think, the major spoiler from that movie, and I don't know if I'm ready for that either. <laughs> if you could spend a day with any cartoon character, who would it be and why? Maybe Gojo Satoru from Jujutsu Kaisen. One, he's extremely pretty. He would make for a great date. Also, two, he seems like he would be very fun to hang out with. Especially just, you know, judging by his personality and the way that he, you know, took out um, Itadori, Megumi, and Nobara around Tokyo. Like, that sounds like a really great time. <laughs> first anime slash cartoon crush versus current. My first crush was definitely Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon, as well as Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid. And currently, I think I gotta go with Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop, which sounds like an old choice because that series came out in the late 90s, but I only watched it from beginning to finish recently. He just has a really cool vibe. You can't, you can't deny it. It's, it's, it's good. You should see the series if you haven't yet. Are there any anime genres you don't like or any shows you refuse to watch? I'm pretty open to most genres, I would say. I guess the main genres that I pretty much never gravitate towards is horror and extremely gory type series. And that really goes for any type of content, whether it be anime, TV shows, movies, etc. I get spooked really easily and very paranoid, so I just tend to avoid anything particularly scary. <laughs> All right, and last question. If you had to pick two movies or series to cross over with each other, what would they be? I gave this a lot of thought, and I think the crossover that I would love to see would be Jujutsu Kaisen and Bleach. I think that would be freaking cool. They definitely have a lot of similarities, like the, you know, curses versus hollows, jujitsu sorcerers versus soul reapers. The universe and lore is, is very, very similar. Plus, there is such a wide variety of characters and abilities across both series that I think would make for some really, really cool fight scenes. And yeah, when I first watched Jujutsu Kaisen, it immediately made me think of Bleach. And then within the series, um, Itadori, the main character, actually makes a reference to Bleach and other shonen series, which I thought was a really, really nice and cute homage to, you know, the series that had come before it. So that about wraps up the process for this illustration. And before we go, I thought that I would also show y'all the sticker design that will be paired with this artwork for my physical rewards over on Patreon for the month of May. So if you pledge any time between now and May 31st, you will receive these goodies in the mail. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope that I was able to be, you know, some entertaining company for you. And I wish you all a fantastic day or evening. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.
ました。